This evening, I would like to thank all the teachers and the public servants who overwhelmingly turned out to work today. The number of teachers in every single school that went to work exceeded the number of teachers who stayed away. And nationally, overwhelmingly, the teachers went to work. And it is only in the odd case that you had a public servant who didn't go to work. For instance, I was advised that in the Ministry of Health, there were two persons who were missing in the Ministry of Health. One of them, presumably, is the President, the General Secretary of the Teachers, the Public Service Union, Mr. Boucher, and somebody else. I don't know whether they would have gone on strike or whether they were sick or they had some personal business and got time off. That's in the Ministry of Health. I understand that in the school where the president of the teachers' union is the principal, that the overwhelming number of teachers in that school thought of the matter very carefully and went to school. This doesn't mean that they are in any way objecting to the leadership of Mr. Robinson in the school. It's just that they're not following him on this particular escapade, which is called a withdrawal of service. I want to thank the parents who again overwhelmingly sent their children out to school and for the children who went to school. Of course, undoubtedly there were many children who would have liked to have had a day off. You know, children already, some teachers not turning up, let's stay home now. And I'm sure that some of them did that. But overwhelmingly, the teachers went to school. And from, in terms of the turnout of the teachers, this is a slap in the face of that section of the union leadership, which irresponsibly went out against all advice and called a strike. Indeed, I've been advised, and I can be corrected if I'm wrong, that the General Secretary of the Teachers Union went to school. She's a principal. I understand the vice, principal, the vice president, who is a principal, also went to school. Other members of the executive went to school, of course, in fairness. A few stayed away from the executive. One who is on leave, he told me that if he was not on leave, an executive member, he was going to school. He didn't agree with the strike. It was so unnecessary. I guess they will now want to come and talk with me. As I said, I'm open to discussion on an ongoing basis. I wanted to talk to them in October, after we met in July, and let us review and look at the situation to see what I can do, if anything at all. And the teachers and the public servants again know that of all the prime ministers in the history of this country, there is none who has been a greater friend of the teachers and the public servants, the public service, the educational system, than Comrade Ralph. I'm very happy that the police officers, who are public servants, didn't get involved in this at all. The nurses and doctors, who are also public servants, didn't get involved in this at all. They went about their work normally, and I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart. Now, there are a few residual issues. I was advised that quite irresponsibly, 
SVG TV last night carried a story emanating from Ivan O'Neill concerning secret salary increases of the Prime Minister and the, and the Cabinet members. On the one hand, he said it's secret, and on the other hand, he says it's inside of the estimates. And I heard that Mr. Boucher, who is the General Secretary, was advised by this same source, Ivan O'Neill. I don't know why people would want to depend on Ivan O'Neill for speaking the truth about anything or understanding it. Yesterday on Star, I didn't know about what Ivan O'Neill said. It's only later. But I had heard about the interview with Mr. Boucher and a journalist, in quotation marks, Jerry George, where he said that the cabinet had given a secret increase to themselves and that I had gotten an increase of $10,000. Well, they didn't say whether it was $10,000 a month or $10,000 a year. And over what period of time, I hear they say that it is between 10 to 10 and 20 15. Now, let me establish clearly what has been the policy of this government. The parliamentarians get whatever percentage increases the public servants, the teachers, everybody else gets. If you get 2%, the parliamentarians get it. If 2% goes on on my salary, 2% goes on on the salary of the leader of the opposition and every other parliamentarian, and the public servants get the 2%. While public servants get increments, we in parliament don't get annual increments. And when the public servants got in 2007, the vast majority of them and all the teachers, when they got big enhancements as a result of the reclassification, the parliamentarians were not involved in any reclassification. We got none of that. So that, what do we have about Ralph Salary as Prime Minister and Arnim Eustace's? Let me explain. In 2000 and Nine. The monthly salary of the Prime Minister was $11,147.21. That's the basic salary. $11,147.21. In 2015, this year, my monthly salary, my basic salary, is twelve thousand and fifty five dollars and seventy cents. That's my salary. The leader of the opposition. In two thousand and nine, his salary monthly was seven thousand three hundred and three dollars and ninety six cents. And in two thousand and fifteen it was seven thousand eight hundred and ninety nine sixteen. Well, I raised him, I leave them, I put the quote, the monthly figures for me because I hear their propagandists are saying that I took $10,000 a month increase. Well, it would be a hell of a thing if my salary is only $12,057.70. How did I get a $10,000 a month increase? But what everybody got is this, and I want to read what the Director General of Finance and Planning provided for the Prime Minister this morning the public servant. I asked him in the light of what Mr. Boucher had said in the Jerry George interview. Some people call it a propaganda piece. And the folly which SVG 
TV broadcast in relation to Ivan O'Neill. This is what Mr. Edwards, the Director General of Finance and Planning, wrote. And I want to read it, and I want to read every line. It's not a long statement he sent to me. The policy for some time now is for parliamentarians to be awarded the identical salary increase granted to public servants. That's what I've always said, and that is the policy. Public servants were awarded the following increase for the period 2009-2011. That period, a three-year period. 3% 3 in 2009, 5% in 2010, and 3% in 2011. You remember in 2010, we had split the payment of the 5%, but in 2010, you got the whole 5%, so it was split. And in 20, the number for 2011, I didn't give it in 2011. I gave it in 2012 and 2013, half, half, backdated to 2011. What the public servants and the teachers got? Ralph got, Eustace got, and every other parliamentarian got the same percentage increase. Mr. Edwards goes on to, to say this. The amounts shown for personal emoluments in the 2010 estimates included the 3% for 2009 only. You get that? There was a general provision for salary increase under the various account heads. The amounts shown for personal emoluments in the 2015 estimates include the salary increase for the three years compounded because they were paid. Three in 2009, five in 2010, three in 2011. Hence, the 2015 salaries for all positions, all the positions, including the Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition, is 8.15% higher than the 2010 position, which is simply the addition of 5% for 2010 and 3% for 2011 compounded. Well, you don't have to be a mathematical genius to see that. You just have to know basic maths. The Director General of Finance and Planning, Mr. Edward, goes on in a statement to me. There was no increase granted to cabinet members beyond this general salary increase for all public servants. So, this TV station allow, SVG TV allow, um, uh, Ivan O'Neill to bamboozle them with foolishness. And Mr. Boucher, who equally should know better, allowed Mr. O'Neill to bamboozle him again with foolishness. And Mr. O'Neill has a history of such utter folly. That is why people don't take him seriously. But somehow, one or two intelligent people, just because they want to have drama, they do these things. I would make a comment in relation to Mr. George because I'm dealing with what Mr. Boucher says and what Mr. O'Neill said. And there it is. No. If we go back to 2001, when I came to office, I deal with the annual salary now. The annual salary of the Prime Minister in 2001 is $105,000 to $28. The annual. Today is $144,669. It's a year. That is an increase of 37%. Just over 37%. 
a similar movement in Mr. Eustace's salary as leader of the opposition. From 2001, $66,952 to $94,790. But let us look at the movement of Mr. Boucher's salary. Since he has introdu introduced himself and put himself in this system, I always told Mr. Boucher, and I told all of them, please keep your discussion on principles and don't get involved in any personal attacks on me. I, I always beg them to do that. I'm not attacking them personally, but I will draw comparisons. Remember, the increase for the parliamentarians is in the order of 37%. between 2001 and 2015. Let us deal with the principal in primary schools. In 2001, Mr. Robinson was not principal, but the salary for a principal, which was a non-graduate position, was $27,492 a year. But in keeping with the government policy of having quality leadership, in schools. We insist that all the teachers who are principals be university graduates and we paid for them, the government organized for them to be so trained, including Mr. Robinson. So the teacher, head teacher of a primary school salary in 2001 was 27,492. But in 2015, he starts at $48,864 a year. That's a 97% increase. The reason why it's so big is because they were reclassified upwards plus their graduate teachers now. Engineering assistant, which I've been advising Mr. Boucher's job down at the maintenance unit down at the hospital. The starting salary for that post, and I'm dealing with the post, just that they occupy them now, was $27,972 in 2001. And in 2015, the starting salary for that post of Mr. Boucher, engineering assistant, is $48,060, an increase of 72%. Again, a much higher percentage increase than for the parliamentarians for two reasons. One, the parliamentarians don't get the annual increments. And the parliamentarians did not benefit from the reclassification exercise. I am very happy that they have made such a complete fool of themselves on this matter. Because it allows me to show the public that under the ULP, that the government has been careful in keeping the salary increases of the parliamentarians to a very modest level. And the difference in salaries between, say, the Director General of Finance and Planning and myself, who is his political boss, and the Cabinet Secretary and myself, that difference has narrowed because they got the increases, what I got. But on top of that, they got increments, which I didn't get. And they get reclassification monies, which I also didn't get. Why do they want to drag me in this thing to look as though I am anxious to fleece the government and to do and fleece the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which is not true at all, as I've just explained, and as the Director General of Finance and Planning has issued a statement, I don't know how plainer I can make it. But what they do when they tell such lies about Ralph, you know, they're going about telling people I get a salary increase of $10,000 a month. I take it secretly. Well, if my salary is $12,000 something dollars a month, 
How could I take an increase of $10,000? I mean, common sense will tell you. And the people at the TV station should have known what is the policy of the government. I ask them if they don't listen to my speeches. Now, we have gone past that, and people now know the truth. And I want to say that, again, the teachers' union leadership and the public service union leadership want to talk. The door has always been open to talk with them. But I could tell you, I can't afford, the people of St. Vincent and Grenadines can't afford $25 million. Can't afford, as I had told them, I couldn't afford half of that when they asked me. But I also said to them, I will keep everything on the reflection and see the best that I can do, which is what I continue to strive to do. And I promised them that next year, where there's a prediction that the economy will have a little more uptick, I, I, that the revenues would be a little stronger, that we can give a modest increase for everybody next year. As for the present, I'm still looking to see what best I can do. But they should watch me <laughs> and see. They can watch externally and see Ralph. I'm not a man involved in flashy and expensive things. I wear a swatch. I don't wear a Rolex. You go around, you see prime ministers and ministers in this Caribbean wearing swatches and very expensive um, watches. This is $70. I bought it. At a, you see it as a simple black band. It tells me the time and I feel comfortable with it. These glasses. I gave my daughter the prescription, and she bought them online for me. They're either 70 or $75. She bought a second pair, which is a little cheaper. In St. Vincent, we will pay $1,000 for this, $1,200. But I take advantage of online shopping in that regard. There are certain things I buy on the from the shops which sell and other things like everybody else. This is a different age. I don't have a designer pair of glasses. These are the same ones I wear I, I wore at the United Nations and read my speech. It didn't make my speech any less impressive. And I and people didn't tell me that I look ugly in them. In fact, I watch myself and I, I, they don't look bad. So why are they getting me involved in this kind of foolishness? And everybody knows Ralph in this country. I'm not going to talk other things in relation. I just give those things by a, sign, by a signal. I'm sorry that I have to take up people's valuable time and my own by rebutting the foolishness of Boucher and also of um, O'Neill. O'Neill is very glad, no doubt, that he bamboos less Fiji TV, so his name is called. But you see this very thing. Every election he gets about 30 votes nationally. By making such a fool of himself, he might go to 15. Meanwhile, we have important work to do for the nation. And I have four in a row to win. God bless you.